Okay, I'm going to call the Finance Committee uh, meeting of May 28, 2019 to order at 20 after, 23 after 1 o'clock and start with an apology that uh, I had uh, erred on my misremembering that we had changed the time of today's meeting to 1 o'clock, so I uh, really apologize for that. Uh, the agenda. I'm going to call our meeting. Okay, you want to call? Yeah, and I'm going to call, seeing that we have a quorum of the council, I'm going to call the meeting of the council to order at 124. So we have um, you know, principally two items that are on the agenda, though um, there is a third that is a part that, that sort of flows from it. One is that we need to talk about and vote on the um, required submission to the town council on the budget for FY20. And that is required action. The charter indicates that once it is referred to the uh, finance committee, that the finance committee has 30 days to review the uh, budget for the next fiscal year and to make its report to the council. And uh, we have been in a series of meetings that have been biweekly um, and uh, in that process, I think of a thorough understanding of the budget, um, except for one piece, which I'll have to uh, ask um, um, Sonia uh, to explain to us and that is the actual, um, what are referred to in our new form of government, the orders that will be required to be passed by the council, which we need to incorporate into our recommendation. So we'll do, get to that first. The second thing is that um, we did put on uh, the agenda, in an amended agenda, the further discussion of the um, Community Preservation Act proposals um, that were referred to uh, the Finance Committee. Um, that um, is an important discussion for us to have. Um, the committee is not mandated to take action on that today. We are mandated to take action on the FY20 budget. Um, and then the third item that I was referring to is that out of that we have to uh, um, decide on content of the report that we're submitting to the council. So those are the three items. Sonia, um, can you explain the, um, what is required in our new form of go um, government for what are referred to as orders that would have to be passed by the council? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is all new to me. So uh, Margaret and I worked together to put um, these sample orders, to put these draft orders um, for the operating budget. Are we going in order of the operating budget first, or are we skipping around? Uh, if you could just explain the orders that are required for the operating budget, I think that would be a a um, good place to just start so that everybody understands what the orders are. Um, well, the, order, um, the orders take the place of the um, town meeting warrant articles that we used to have. That would be for the general fund budgets and all of our assessments and our water and enterprise fund budgets, uh, debt. I think that's all of them. For the um, general fund operating budget and the enterprise funds, and then any capital would have been voted in a separate article. What we tried to do with the orders here, we looked at some um, sample, samples from other towns, and a lot of them had grouped a l all of these into one number with just detail of what is in that one number. So that's what we tried to do. So you'd only have one vote that doesn't preclude you from discussing each of these individually. We, we went with the one number uh, for the operating budgets and one for capital, 
CPA is broken out because there is the cash, which is just a majority vote, and then there's the land purchases, which is a two-thirds vote, and a borrowing is two-thirds, so those are broken out. Um, The capital is one vote for building equipment and facilities where it used to be broken up into two votes. We just um, grouped it together with the funding sources and the grid tells you the difference. Um, I guess that's pretty much it, I don't really. In the bond authorization votes to which you referred that require separate orders, uh, is there one for the capital program and a second one that would be proposed um, for the Community Preservation Act? There's a separate one for the Community Preservation Act because it's community preservation and not part of the general um, bond authorizations. If you look on the last page of the order, page seven, we put this order together and we grouped all the bonds together that are being voted under section seven and it's okay to group these. However, they'll probably show up as separate orders when we're ready to vote those authorizations. This is here for you to see so you have a sample in front of you. But this one, I don't, we're not expecting you to make any recommendations or votes on today because we don't really have um, solid numbers on what we're gonna actually authorize for borrowing. These are just our best guess through the capital program for the um, public works design, fire station design, and new school design, and the um, INET loop. The, those are the numbers that were in the capital plan, but until we get closer to those projects starting, then we'll bring those borrowing authorizations to you. But I just thought it was kind of neat that we could group them all together and town council was okay with that. Uh. And I guess the only question that I would have, and then I want to see if there's any members of the committee or the council that have other questions regarding the orders right now. But my question is, um, under the charter, um, we are required to make a recommendation on the operating budget for um, the, by Monday's meeting. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the capital program is a part of the operating budget. Um, is it an interpretation that since the uh, payment of, um, on these would not come from operating funds so that we can vote that separately? Because our bar the source is borrowing, yes. The capital, the capital article is in here separately for the cash capital. So that's here, it's all set, ready for you to make your recommendation today if you wish. Okay. Um, the bar, I'm just talking about borrowing articles, the authorization. Correct. It's not and actually spending money. In the proposed orders for the, or is it proposed order for the operating budget? Is actually it's two because the capital is separate, correct? Correct. So there, there would be two that would be required as part of the operating budget, one for operating, or for the, for the general budget, one for operating, one for capital. Correct. And those are part of the recommendation that we need to make for Monday's meeting for council action, and the council has to act on that before the end of uh, June. and. Um, um, I don't know if the president anticipates action on June 3rd or June 17th on that. If, um, if the council is prepared on June 3rd to vote the operating budget appropriation, Part B, then that is on the, budget, on the agenda for uh, June 3rd. However, we have delayed till the 17th on that agenda the capital program appropriations because we have the hearing Right. on June 10th. Right. Um, so my question would be, should the Finance Committee also delay until after June 10th on its recommendation? 
It's really a question more for the chair. Uh, on, the, on the general budget, uh, I would think that to be consistent with the charter requirement, we probably would need to okay. make a recommendation on anything uh, on the pieces that are FY20 uh, for certain, and uh, there's no reason why we wouldn't go forward with the mm -hmm. uh, at least make some statement and explanation, even recommendation on the borrowing, but the borrowing would not need to be voted on until we have actual numbers, and that's not known at this point. Right. The key here is anything that, any, if, there's, if it involves an appropriation, then it needs to be voted before July 1st. If it's an authorization to borrow, it can be, it can happen after July 1st. Okay. So let me turn to other members of the council, including the committee as to whether there are questions that they want to ask about the required orders that um, need to be approved to complete the budget process. So seeing that nobody has indicated uh, that they have any, do uh, you have one? So I, I, you know, in trying to look back and forth, I, it's staying on the capital budget, um, where do we have to, um, we're allocating 9.5% of the tax revenues to capital. Is there a point where I can see that 9.5%? So if I took one of these, that we're, we're getting up to that amount of money. I'm just cross-looking at it with the table, because you've broken it up to the mm -hmm. pieces. So that's the total, you know, rather than the pieces of it, Andy. So, and just, I'm, as you know, we just got these orders. So would that be in the second order? Would I see it? Um, without going back and looking at my... It's, it's, a, it's a total of 5.014 million, you know, so that's the part we're taking of the leap. I'm just, yeah, I think I... So you would take the debt service total, subtract the CPA funding source, and then take the capital total, and subtract the 40,000 yep. from repurposed capital. And you should have your, you should have that number or close to it if I forgot something. But I can tie that into you. If you want to meet with me later, I can. That can be explained in a follow-up memo that process that is being described by Ms. Aldrich uh, for the proposed orders does map with what town meeting previously did uh, because while the policy, um, town policy is to measure a percentage of the general uh, tax revenue uh, the property uh, that is then allocated to capital that includes um, prior expenditures, bond repayment, and that was always included as an operating expense and um, in the operating budget uh, for debt payment, and then uh, the capital expenditures were voted in separate, um, actually separate articles within Mm -hmm. the uh, town meeting warrant. And so the splitting of these orders um, in this fashion is consistent with prior policy. Right, and if you look at the capital, um, the capital plan that was published, if you look at the summary page, you'll see the numbers that you'll see in these orders. The only reason I was asking, I can see that match up, but since we're having the discussion of the capital plan on June 10th, I thought you know there would be one to say the total amount of money going to capital, and then another discussion about the pieces of it. But we're doing both here as I look at these orders. The pieces are also in here of the cash part. That, it, it's just a quite you know it's that's what these orders do. It, yeah, I'm just, right. Okay. It's a little confusion beca confusing because the debt service is part of the capital, but it's really 
it's really part of the general fund budget. So that's where the funding source comes from, the capital, and we, and we show it in the capital plan, and it's part of that $5 million that you're talking about, but it's really part of the operating budget to pay debt service. So, like I said, welcome yeah. to municipal accounting. And I think that in, um, <laughs> this is actually helpful because um, on June 10th, we can make that explanation at the beginning and point out that the uh, part of the capital, 9.5% that has been allocated, goes to repayment of prior debt, which is actually in the operating budget. We can explain that so that um, one of the things in the draft um, that I did, I haven't had a chance to get to my fellow committee members of the proposed language for the um, uh, report to town meeting that deals with capital. Um, it gets to the identification of the amount of cash capital for the year because that's what JCPC was working with, not the larger amount. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the JCPC report, it matches what um, Ms. Aldrich is referring to. Um, so, um, so that we can go on to um, Community Preservation Act, um, the, you have indicated that there would be two separate orders that would be recommended for Community Preservation Act, and one uh, maybe it'd be helpful for uh, since there's a lot of people who are interested in that. There's actually four it. separate orders. Four separate orders. And um, this is one, and this is all the categories, all the cash capital that's going for all the projects. Um, you can look at the list and you can see what they are, so I'm not gonna read them out to you. But this is a two-thirds vote. I mean, this is a majority vote, so it's all grouped as one number. It doesn't stop you from discussing each line item or changing the line items. You can change them, you can decide not to um, vote for one portion of it, the bottom line gets adjusted. That's the, um, that's the main part of the CPA votes. Which, and that's for a total of $839,040. And then and there's land acquisitions. So the land acquisitions, which have to do with the Zala property and the Keith it's Haskins property. Uh, because there's so much happening here, they're purchasing the land, they're transferring deeds, they're doing a lot of things in one article. So it needs to be a two thirds vote. So it has to be separate. Okay. But because the uh, order encompasses the allocation of funds from FY20 Community Preservation Act funds, we do need to vote on that before the end of June. Right, the, the, grid, the order before this one and the two land because they are using um, cash funds, they have to be appropriated before June 30th. Okay, so then that gets to the final order that would be under the Community Preservation Act, and that happens to be the one for the Valley CDC proposal. Correct. And it is also borrowing. Correct because it's a borrowing authorization and not an actual appropriation to pay any bills, then it can, that can go beyond June 30th. I mean, yeah, June 30th. It requires two thirds as to the two that involve land acquisition. Yes. Because those are the two things for people who are familiar with town meeting, those were the two things that also by state law required two thirds, anything that involved borrowing or um, land purchasing. Um, and so the final question I have, and then I'm going to go back and ask uh, my fellow counselors as to whether they have questions on the proposed orders. Um, 
the date by which action would be required by the council on the Valley CDC that does not involve, uh, that's all borrowing, uh, is detached a little bit from the dates of the other. Correct. Uh, but that uh, what we would want to do is make, is ask the council to consider it in a time that if the council voted to um, go forward with this particular uh, um, borrowing authorization, that it'd be in time that Valley CDC um, would then be able to effectively utilize the uh, borrowing authorization for its application for state funding. Yes. Yes, is there anything you wanna add? Yeah. Um, at the point in time, I do, but we can fin continue reviewing the orders. Okay. So now, uh, again, opening to count full council for questions. Andy, I'm just wondering, is there, Andy, I'm wondering, uh, is there, you're saying it, uh, the Valley CDC vote can, can um, wouldn't have to come until before they could use it or, but you have a, an idea when that date would be? Like we know we have a deadline of June 30th. Do we have one of 7.15? What's? Let me just go ahead and make my statement. Uh, we uh, talked before about creating a discussion with a facilitator and we have set a date for that. It is now on June 18th. Uh, at six o'clock, it will be at the Bang Center. We hired a professional facilitator, somebody that I have worked with on numerous occasions and is very good at this type of conversation. Her name is Nancy Taylor. She does not live in Amherst. In fact, she lives in New Hampshire. So she's not personally wed to this, but we have set that date. Therefore, I will strongly be recommending that we do not take action on the Valley CDC funds until after that time. The next two council meetings right after that are July 1st and July 22nd. And at that point, we, and I have checked with Valley CDC, and by delaying for that period of time does not in really hurt their application. So it gives us time to have a community conversation about this. Thank you. George. So this uh, gathering is in addition to what they had promised they were going to do or in place of, or do you know? This is in place of. We negotiated the date with them. So, good. Thank you. Yes, Kat. Okay, I have a question on another a land purchase. The Keat, Keat Hashkin property, the way the, this is written, has the town manager authorized to borrow another $400,000? And in what we looked at, there was an additional grant that would be matching our money. So I'm just wondering why it's written that we would be borrowing the 400,000. Um, okay, did you want me to go through each order and explain so, each one? You know, or? So I don't mean to jump around. I just, you said any questions on any of them and I, that was the first one. So I can, I, I'm perfectly willing to go through in another order. But I, it just caught my eye, this authorization to borrow. And the description that I have from CPA is we put up, we're buying a piece, and then there's a $400,000 This line. is correct. I, I put a little grid on the bottom so that you can kind of understand where the funding sources are coming from. The total cost of the of Keith Haskins is $638,000. And... Um, CPA is giving 238 towards that, and then there is a land grant for 400,000. What this borrowing authorization is just saying, we can borrow 400,000 in anticipation of the grant coming in, and 99.9% .9 of the time, we don't end up borrowing that money. It's just there in case of timing, when the, um, when the deal happens, if it's too close to the fiscal year, sometimes we it's a cash flow issue, and that's all this is. 
would we be at risk of $400,000 if we did not get the land grant, having authorized this money? Uh, normally, they don't do the purchase until the land grant is received. Or we have a, a contract, a signed contract from the state. Yeah, that I'm, we are I'm just getting. purely looking at the language as this is written, because it wasn't what we were originally looking at. So, you know, it's. Well, this is the legal language. <laughs> Yeah, so it's legal. Or, so if, for example, the land grant didn't come through, does our whole purchase end? So we were willing to do this if there were a land grant, but they would if have, not, we, they would would, only, we wouldn't even spend it. They would have to come back to the council for another source of appropriation if they wanted to continue. And would that include that we wouldn't even pay the 238000 Right, that happens at the closing. All the money gets put together. We don't release that 238000 until we have a sales agreement in front of us. Here. So what you're saying is there is no risk? No risk. I'm, I'm looking at the very last one and where we would do bond authorization requiring two-thirds vote, and you said we would delay that until such time as we were ready to move on those. So we're not gonna vote on those in this June period, right? Right. Okay, and when we do vote on them, can we separate this? Yes, we can. Oh. And the reason they're like this is because with the new form of government, we have more flexibility and timing. We would probably be asking you to vote for these numbers if we were at town meeting, because we only met twice a year. Got it. So. Thank you. So additional questions on the orders that are proposed. If not, um, I'm gonna ask if, uh, whether it's the interest of the group to um, go talk now about the Community Preservation Act proposals because of the, um, in, I'm assuming, excuse me if I'm wrong, but that's the principal interest of a lot of the people who are here, so I don't want to further delay if there's no reason. Well, I would definitely support that, especially since we had our late start. So uh, I think we can actually go for, with the, um, we've had some valuable information on the Valley Community Development Corporation proposal first, uh, and the question of uh, whether the Finance Committee will uh, even make a recommendation until after the forum that was referred to, uh, I think is a question that we'll have to get to if there's any reason. Lynn? If you'd like that in a motion, I'd like to move that we delay any action regarding the Valley CDC uh, project until after the forum has occurred on June 18th and we have an opportunity to meet again. Um, I would second that. It has been been a motion that's been made and seconded, so it's on the floor that, uh, to delay consideration of this particular proposal. Any discussion on the, uh, either the, mo the motion on the floor in particular? I just want to stress that this is a finance committee motion, not a full town council motion. We're, the town council is not voting today. Yes. So I'm not a member of finance committee, um, but I want to speak just as a colleague um, who serves on other committees. Um, you know, Pat and George and I serve on GOL, and GOL has been having a lot of discussion of what's our appropriate role and what did the council uh, originally envision for GOL and trying to make sure that we're not exceeding that original vision. Um, and I think that one of my concerns has been the discussion over this proposal in the context of finance, because my understanding of finance committee is to advise the town council on financial matters, such as borrowing and debt uh, authorization expenditures and all of that. Uh, and so my hope has been that 
consideration of this by the Finance Committee would be limited to the financial implications of that. Um, and what I've seen has been not that. And I understand that it's hard uh, in public comment uh, to necessarily keep a conversation restrained. Um, but my hope was that consideration and a vote would be limited on the financial implications. My understanding of that June 18th community meeting is that that would be focused not on uh, whether or not that meets our debt limit or any of that, but these broader community conversations, which are really outside the purview of finance committee. Um, and so unless finance expects to learn anything additional on the financial implications per their charge between now and June 18th, uh, I'm not quite sure what the purpose is other than to delay for delay's sake. And so I guess my, my thought is a lot of the concerns we've heard from um, the neighborhood have not been on debt authorization, has not been on expenditure by the town. It's been on public safety concerns. It's been on um, loss of access to a private field at a, a, an elite college. It's, it's not been stuff that really matters to, to this committee. Um, and so I'm not quite sure, and I'd love to hear from the committee, and I think Kathy's rearing to go, um, what the purpose of, I could understand delaying the council vote, and it seems like that's going to happen. It would make sense. I, I absolutely don't think the council should vote on this before that June 18th meeting. I don't see any reason for this committee to be delaying their recommendation. Kathy? Um, I did raise some questions at, when we were listening to this, and I tried to do just what you said, that suggest, stay on finance. I have some questions about the total cost to the town um, and sustainability of the project, um, and I got an assurance not to worry, but uh, those are additional questions. Um, so I had a public impact. Will we have to do any road work? opening up a new bus station? Do, will we have to do any supplemental um, help on social services and support? And longer term, is the budget as envisioned adequate to keep up maintenance of the building long term? So there's some money put aside in maintenance. So I'd, I would like to get more answers to those. I mean, they may be good, solid answers. And just to point out, I got a better understanding of some of the debt that uh, the Community Preservation Act is paying off is for properties that we had for a while in Whalen, and that was for rehabilitation of those. So we have gone back, in, which I think is appropriate. If we committed to affordable housing, we're committed to keeping it, it at um, well-maintained levels. So properties have come back over time to ask for more money so that was rehab, rehabbing units. So I just want to understand the, the larger picture, not uh, questioning the content of the proposal. Yes. Uh, so I, I think I understand that, although I do think Ann Whalen as Amherst Housing Authority property would be treated differently than this project. Um, but you can't hear you. You're talking too fast and too slow. I'm sorry, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was saying, first, I, I, I understand Kathy's concerns. My, my concern is, the motion was made to delay until after the community meeting. Um, you're asking, my instructions from the email from our president was that we are to attend the community meeting as listeners only, much in the way we did at the schools, which would mean those questions probably wouldn't be answered at the community meeting. So the rationale of tying this vote to that community meeting seems to suggest that the outcome of that community meeting would have some bearing on the vote of the finance committee. And that, to me, seems to broaden the scope of the Finance Committee beyond what the Council intended. And I worry that there is some perception in the Council and in the public uh, that the Finance Committee on this proposal could be viewed as a gatekeeper, uh, which I don't think was ever the intention. That's certainly not my intention, but I share some of the same issues and concerns that Kathy has already voiced. Uh, and I've I, you noticed I said until we also have time to meet again, and it is very possible that in our meeting again, we might ask Valley CDC or others to come forward and provide us with additional information that has financial bearing on our decision. Yes. I just wanted to answer one of Kathy's question, which was that Valley CDC would own the building and the property and they would be responsible for maintenance, uh, not the town. 
I, unless I'm wrong, um, once CPA has invested money in it, uh, you can come back. So even if it's not public, you can come back and be asked. You know, so, so it's, it's, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to preclude it to say that we would have this and make it available in town and watch it deteriorate. I would want to make sure we had budget, that they had budgeted for it so it wouldn't ever happen. Um, I, I think that uh, your concern is misplaced. I um, think that it's sort of projecting out to a, well, what if this happened? Because if we applied that logic, we wouldn't be voting on hardly anything unless we knew exactly what was going to happen in the future. And I really trust from my visits to Valley CDC the quality of the buildings, uh, how they're maintained and things like that. So that's the thing I'm addressing right now is maintenance of the building. I think to get back to Evan's question, and I appreciate the point that you're making, um, I had also been of the uh, view that Finance Committee needed to define its role and that this was actually a proposal that needed to go before several committees. And um, I think the other one I thought about was the Community Resources Committee because in, in, in wanting to limit the role of the Finance Committee to the financial implications, which is what the charge in the charter, or the charge that's been adopted by the uh, council is for the Finance Committee. Uh, there are issues that, you know, I have identified, and I've said them in other places, is that uh, there's a request for an amount of money, um, and uh, is there a financial structure that is possible as an alternative that would require um, a different sum of money? Obviously, um, a lower sum of money would be what we would be asking, and, but would still permit this to go forward. So that's one financial piece to this. A second financial piece is um, that we need to um, at least consider um, as a council and probably as a finance committee point this out to the council that um, we're making a long-term commitment of funds um, for the Community Preservation Act that don't become available for future years and um, so that the choices that will be available in future years will be affected and that, that we just need to understand um, that that's an appropriate choice and that we're making that choice knowledgeably. Um, it is not different, however, from, and I'll use the direct analogy of Rolling Green. We borrowed a fairly large sum of money for, um, there was um, also a CPA proposal that had exactly the effect that I described in order to keep Rolling Green from being sold um, and to a developer that would remove its um, income, low income housing restrictions on a portion of the units. That's what we were bargaining for. That's what the CPA funds were being used for. So that there is a direct analogy for this and um, one that needs to be considered. So I think that those were the uh, principal ones that I had thought about that I think that the commit finance committee and the council do need to consider that are direct financial implications. But uh, the motion on the floor is just to postpone finance committee uh, consideration uh, and I assume that we would be taking it up before the end of the month of June but looking but not to broaden the scope of our inquiry does that answer your question it, it, it does and I guess my point is um, in the when finance considered uh, station road I felt like there was a lot of focus on how this affects free cash how this affects uh, and the conversation around this project just hasn't felt 
that way. Uh, we have this letter in front of us today that has nothing to do with finance. I'm not quite sure why it was put in front of me for this meeting. Um, and so my hope is that in the, in the Andy and Kathy Bostry's very good financial concerns that I think should be part of the conversation and, and my hope as a colleague is that it will, because as Andy said, this was a project that should be considered by multiple committees. Uh, the aspects that are in this letter, I think, would be better served in community resources. Community resources already discussed and recommended this project. Um, and so my hope is that going forward, finance will have a, a narrow discussion around this and the financial implications and uh, will ignore some of these other aspects until the full council, uh, which is the more appropriate venue for such discussions. So, is yes, Lynn. I'm, I'm just going to add one other thing. One of my total and complete perspectives on any borrowing is our debt limit. And when I look at the last page, seven of seven here, and I add up the other projects that we would be kicking off with some of these things, such as the public works design, fire station design, new school design. It goes ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And debt limit, two of these projects alone is the half million dollars asked for. So I want to take it all into consideration. It's not a no, it's a financial issue. Yes, Oh, thank you. Um, it seems to me, taking that philosophy, Lynn, then we shouldn't do anything about the Keat House property. We shouldn't do anything about the Salas property because we don't know how it's going to affect us down the road. I think that the CDC project is being singled out in a very different way because the intensity of the opposition and of the support for the project. Um, I think, uh, like Evan, that We've been mixing apples and oranges and calling them fruit, but the Finance Committee uh, is more limited in its charge than it's willing to accept. And I hear a lot of um, pushing to lower maybe how much we get maybe or we give them, and I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned that that's playing um, not just with finances but with people's lives, both the neighbors and the uh, potential occupants. Um, I, have a, yes. I guess I'm confused about, I thought in the discussion of the Keith Haskins property that there was no financial risk beyond the fact CPA money is in fact our taxpayer money that we do as an added percentage. But beyond that, which we have agreed to do, um, I did, thought that you said there was no uh, way in which we were going to lose money on that. The Keith Haskins, the borrowing on that is just a grant anticipation note because granting authorities always want you to appropriate the full amount of the, of the acquisition of the property. So because we don't have 400,000 extra dollars to appropriate, we are just using a grant anticipation note. So it's just a short-term borrowing authorization which we won't use and will go away as soon as the grant comes in. So there's no risk. But that, I don't think that's the context of what that was, what was discussed. Could, could you also speak to the Zala pro property since that has been raised? The Zala property is just a purchase of 188000 It's with, C with existing CPA funds or um, estimated revenues for fiscal year 20. There's no borrowing. There's no borrowing. Thank you. So, anything else that I, mean, I, I the the question of uh, the town's borrowing capacity really falls into several different pieces that we've talked about in trying to um, sort of plan ahead for all of the major projects, and one of them has to do with the question of what is the total amount of indebtedness that any community is willing to take on, which is um, limited by um, state law to, what is it, 5% of the... Um, EQV. Just, 
the EQV, mm-hmm. which is the total, essentially the total of all of the property value in the town, um, that does not appear to be now an issue because uh, Bond Council has advised us that uh, the, an MSBA funded proposal is distinct. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's the second question of what is a wise amount of indebtedness to take on for a community, uh, both for its ability to repay, its effect on taxpayers, its limitations on future uses for um, funds that are being used to repay or for future borrowing possibilities. And that's kind of a different set of issues that um, we very much do need to talk about. However, CPA, because it's a separate bucket of money, um, doesn't have any um, the direct effect because it's really being done with different source of funds. So when I, which is why I characterized it as an effect on future CPA uses, not the rest. Um, so that's the distinction I would make. I think. Is thank there you any for that clarification. George, did you? I just said thank you for that clarification. And George, did you have something? I just I want, for my own sake, to be clear that what I'm hearing seems to be that this committee has some concerns about the financial implications of this borrowing for this particular CPA project and they want to look more at it in detail, and then they're going to get back to the full council with their recommendations on this, and I'm hoping that it will uh, give us some uh, clear sense of what these concerns are, if they are, and uh, what the financial implications are, because at the moment, it does seem very vague to me. Um, Obviously, you have questions, so you're looking for answers. I assume that You'll get those answers soon, and you'll get back to us in the full council with your uh, sense of uh, how you see the financial implications of this borrowing for the town. That's what you're looking into at the moment. Is that correct? That's correct, and I appreciate the, uh, the observation. I think that what has happened, though, is, is that we did not receive a presentation of the Community Preservation Act proposals from the Community Preservation Act Committee at a finance committee meeting until um, late in May, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so we really have not had an opportunity to talk about it. It's uh, not that we necessarily have a concern, but we just haven't had an opportunity to even have the discussion as of yet. Um, and, Part of it is we recognize that there's this whole other grouping of issues that has been raised by both proponents of the proposal and people who are expressing concerns about the proposal. And uh, we sort of recognize that they're out there as that separate bucket of issues. And uh, mm-hmm. yes. Um, is it, is it possible that I could mention something about the report you're working on, or should I not be able to do that? Which report are you referring to? The um, Town Council Finance Committee report on fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, I have a question about a statement you made in there. Is it directly related to CPA, if not? It's, well, it, it's... It said that our, it's, uh, the way I'm reading this is that the town is only managing to balance its budget by having large amounts of growth and projecting large amounts of growth into the future. So it didn't sound as solid as I thought it would. Um, I guess, uh, again, the reason that I was trying to distinguish that is that um, our future budget uh, questions that are related to the operating budget are distinct from the Community Preservation Act budget because that's a separate source of taxation. It's a separate piece of taxation that is for a dedicated purpose. And uh, so I was trying to keep the focus right now on the motion on the floor, which has to do with CPA 
and uh, what you were reading does not actually reflect on the CPA discussion. So having said that, I think we could probably take a vote on the motion on the floor to uh, postpone consideration of the uh, CPA proposal for on the Valley CDC to a later meeting. And that's just the finance committee. This is a finance committee motion. Uh, the uh, timeline for the council has been previously explained in a separate. So finance committee members present, there are four of us present. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising hand. So it's Aye. four, so I can just note it's four zero with one member absent. Um, and other CPA proposal orders. Um, yeah, actually, that's a, the uh, president has suggested that uh, we see if there's any public comment that wants to be offered on what is, uh, actually I'll take public comment on anything at this point, because then we can, while you're here. We're Did you just say? Public comment. It seems to me that public comment should be list, uh, limited to financial issues only, since this is a finance committee meeting. Um, yeah. It, 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 um, the reason that I have been cautious about that with both counselors and with members of the public is because uh, if it goes on for a long period of time, I'm comfortable making that call, but I don't want to limit people's ability to say what they uh, wish to say so that uh, uh, it, it's a question of uh, that balance. It's not a balance. But I, uh, is there anybody from the public who wishes to make comment? Well, why don't you come on up to the microphone so that and please identify yourself so that the minute taker can good afternoon my name is Tim Adderidge I live at 143 Northampton Road in Amherst and I want to speak specifically uh, about financial uh, recommendations that you may consider um, I uh, am a longtime town resident, 51 years, and have lived at my residence uh, for 47 on Northampton Road. And I want to speak about against the borrowing of $500,000 for the CPA project at 132 Northampton Road. As a taxpayer, I think this is a um, a very questionable expenditure of town funds that taxpayers in the town of Amherst will have to uh, burden. And I have a question about the postponement of the Finance Committee meeting to June the 18th at the Banks Community Center. You mentioned that there is a facilitator. What does the facilitator do? Do you want to respond to that? Yes. Uh, first of all, it's not a finance committee meeting on the 18th. It's a public discussion. Public discussion. Okay. And, well, and the facilitator will facilitate the conversation, which we assume will include people from the neighborhood, people okay. from CDC, people who are public housing advocates and affordable housing advocates. It may also include factual information from the town. When is the next time that the Finance Committee is going to vote on this specific $500,000 borrowing? It, that's up to the Chair to determine when we meet next, but I would hope it would be in time to advance a recommendation to the Council by, for its July 1st meeting. Okay. I, that's what I anticipation would be. It would be later in the month of June. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to say uh, at this yes. point? Yes. Uh, you all have 
a packet that I have uh, put together and given to you. And there are numerous reasons, but because this is specifically a financial, a finance committee meeting, the opportunity to speak against the $500,000 for CPA is what I'm here to speak about. I, I would strongly recommend that the Finance Committee not recommend the forwarding of this proposal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to comment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kate Sims, 77 Dana Street. Uh, first, let me thank the committee and uh, Councillor Griesmar for the plan to move forward with a facilitated public conversation. I think that's really a step in the right direction, and I thank you very much for uh, that openness to meaningful input by neighbors. Um, since this is the Finance Committee, I have two comments that I would like to make. Uh, the first is about the cost effectiveness of the project, and the second is about the unbudgeted costs of the project. So hopefully uh, you will find those to be on point for the Finance Committee. So the cost effectiveness of this project, the cost effectiveness of any development matters because lower per unit costs would mean that more people could be helped for the same budget. This project doesn't seem particularly cost effective because the construction costs are very high compared to other structures in the town of Amherst. The total budget for the project is $4.8 million, or approximately $172,000 per unit, for just 240 square feet of apartment space. That's a $716, per, $716 per square foot cost. The median list price per square foot in Amherst as a whole, according to Zillow, is $219. The median list price per square foot in the Boston Cambridge Newton area is $300 per square foot. Uh, Valley CDC maintained at their last meeting that these costs are high because of the high cost of kitchens and bathrooms. And I think that this claim really should be investigated by the counselors to see whether or not there are comparable new construction, uh, there is comparable new construction within the town of Amherst that truly does have comparable costs or not. Um, I'm not sure that that has yet been investigated. Uh, second, project cost is important because, uh, so as, as I mentioned, project cost is important because more people could be assisted if the per unit project cost were lowered. Uh, another way to do this might be taking advantage of existing structures to house people in need. At the meeting last Thursday, Valley CDC stated that they will be allowed to give preference for up to 70% of the 10 units reserved for um, homeless people to be people from Amherst. So I think that means that for the $500,000 borrowing price tag to the town, the development will provide housing for at most seven homeless people from Amherst, at best two to three years in the future. Yet Amherst's Craig Stores shelter said that during the 2017-2018 fall and winter, they served 172 individuals. Uh, finally, project cost is important because of the town of Amherst's relationship with the state. Again, at the May 23rd meeting of the Town Finance Committee, Valley CDC said that the per unit cost to the town of Amherst is low because they will leverage funds from state and federal sources to pay for the project. I have trouble with this argument because, first of all, we all pay state and federal taxes as well, so we should be motivated uh, to be responsible for their wise use. And our reputation of being careful stewards of state and federal funds should be important to all town councilors so that we can seek matching funds for other projects that we would, might want to do. Uh, second, and this was referenced in Councillor Schoen's comments, uh, we haven't really seen any estimate of the associated unbudgeted costs for the town. This development does seem likely to entail substantial extra costs, including needs for better traffic management and lighting in the area, as well as additional resources devoted to social support. Uh, finally, the general public currently enjoys access to Amherst College's Pratt Field, a large recreational open space immediately adjacent to the area. Amherst College, however, has a legal responsibility to mitigate safety risks to their students. And the college has confirmed to neighbors, uh, as read in a statement by Stephen George in public comment 
I think two weeks ago before the council, that in the event of problematic interactions with students, the field would close to those without college ID cards. Uh, to my knowledge, this has never happened before in the 10 years that I've lived in that neighborhood. So if the project does indeed result in the closure of Pratt Field to public access, that is a very real and currently unaccounted for cost to the town in terms of lost use value of an open space. At the last meeting, the town manager noted the difficulty of maintaining all of the great trails and open spaces that we currently have in town uh, because it's expensive to maintain that, that use value. At Pratt Field, you currently have an open space that creates great use value for the town and the maintenance is being paid for by Amherst College. Uh, so I'm not aware of any accounting yet of those possible costs of lost use value to the town. I believe it's the responsibility of the Finance Committee and the town councillors to make a full accounting of the cost effectiveness of the project and these unbudgeted costs before making recommendations on this project. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else in public comment? Seeing none, then I will close the public comment. Wait, is there one in the way back? Two. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see hands. Yeah. I, I know. Thanks for the opportunity. Johanna Newman, 137 Stanley Street, um, resident of District 2. Um, I'm dismayed to see this project delayed and to see the vote on this project delayed. I think there were a number of committees that have um, reviewed this project and there are a number of committees that will review this project um, moving forward and um, I think that this project is consistent with our values as a community and um, I think that by delaying it kind of puts a wet rag on continuing to move forward a really important affordable housing project for our town so thank you for the opportunity yes Hallie Hughes, Orchard Street. I just wanted to make two quick points. First, Councilman Ross referenced the CRC as an opportunity for community members to share their opinions as a better venue. Just want to remind the whole town council that the community was not informed of the project scale or given a chance to meet with Valley CDC until April 24th. The CRC met and made their confirmation or their um, recommendation on the CPA funds on April 23rd. So there was no way there was, that was an open opportunity for people to use the CRC. Second of all, I believe it was Councillor Kathy, not good at last names, who asked about what happened at, at the last meeting, what happens if you can't fill the eight units for the 50% AMI or the eight units for the 80% I, or maybe it was Dorothy Pam. And, Valley CDC said they would fill them with incomes with a lower AMI or those off of homeless. And I was wondering if you could ask Valley CDC how any sort of fluctuation in those ratios would change their operating costs and the support services that they would be able to offer. Because it seems to me that the 50% and 80% of the AMI residents will be subsidizing the rent and the property management and the social services being offered. That's all. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Amanda Robertson, 39 Northampton Road. Um, I am asking for a study of the costs associated with the increased police and fire calls um, that it's hard to project that, but the reason that you have that letter in front of you is because Dr. Hornick actually asked my husband to research this statistic. And he stated that he did not think we would find anything in his question. So my husband did not do that, but other community members did and found an alarming and unusual proportion of police calls that we think should be looked at in terms of many aspects, but financially, the cost of the town. Because as we know, um, the police department and the fire department are frequently considered to be understaffed and overtaxed due to the universities. So I would like to look at that. Also, another question I have 
um, in general to ask Valley CDC financially is, um, it is my understanding that they build these properties but do not manage them themselves. They outsource that. So in that case, with that financially, and I know we don't want to maybe always look to the future and problems that happen into the future. However, I do think that that is something we have to consider when making financial recommendations, especially in something of this magnitude. So if Valley CDC were to go under or to lose budget within their own organization and have budget cuts, would they cut the services that they are offering to the people in the SRO and who would pick up those costs? Would it be the town? Would we have to hire another management company? Would we just let it go? When we all agree, even Valley CDC, that this vulnerable community needs support. So that's a concern I have in terms of, you know, I do think there should be financial fail-safes to try to figure out how to make this the best SRO it can be, considering this is the town's first one and Valley CD's largest to date. Yes. I am Laura Katsaros on Dana Street. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have a community-wide forum to discuss this issue. We really appreciate that, and we look forward to engaging in discussion and debate, you know, acquiring, sharing more information. Um, I just wanted to mention in reference to the letter that you received um, yesterday, just so that everyone knows uh, that the letter was signed uh, by more than 56 or no, 56 people, residents, neighbors, um, and, um, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so the letter was signed, uh, the letter that you received yesterday and that you have acknowledged already was signed by 56 neighbors and residents uh, within less than 21 hours. Um, so I just wanted to point this out. Uh, it's, and it was a letter you know, addressed to your committee, to the finance committee, but I'm not here to talk about numbers, but about except the number of residents who um, you know, subscribe to the point of view addressed in the letter. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I want to make sure that I don't make the same mistake twice and miss anybody the second time. Okay, so uh, appreciate the um, comments. They'll be very helpful for our consideration. One thing that I just want to reiterate and then move forward, um, so because we do need to get back to the um, question of the recommendation on the budget itself, is that um, as we consider the Community Preservation Act, um, whether it be done with um, funds that have already been raised or f um, by borrowing, which is future, it is actually, um, as I said before, a very separate piece so that when we look at the question of uh, borrowing, it's not that it's going to have any direct effect on the taxation for any individual because the repayment would come out of money that has already been um, within the, uh, the CPA uh, taxation portion of the tax. It is a separate amount, um, and, uh, but the effect is on um, future council opportunities to fund other projects um, because it's um, using a part of that future CPA tax to repay a debt. And uh, the um, CPA is limited to very specific uses having to do with affordable housing, open space and recreation, and historic preservation. So, um, anything else on the subject? Um, otherwise, we have to get back to the question as to whether we want to take action, I think, on other CPA proposals today. Because if not, those as noted 
are not part of, don't have to be part of the budget that we need to report back to the council on, so I really need to focus on what we are required by the charter to do by June 3rd, which is to make recommendations on the budget itself, the operating and actual cash, the capital portion of the budget that is a part of the FY20 budget. And uh, we have been given proposed orders for that we would need to enact that they are all consistent with um, the budget that has been presented to us and that we have been discussing. They're just the legal language that goes with it. So, and, and I guess it gets back, uh, Dorothy, did, you had raised, started to raise a question. I don't know if there was still a general question that you wanted, you're asking, or is, was it specific to the CPA? Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a general a question about the general budget. Um, a question on how 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 safe we are, how how well we are financed. Uh, if we are contingent, if paying our bills is contingent on continuing to grow and getting larger tax assessments, I don't find that a great situation. Um, it is really a advisory from that I'm offering and suggesting that we offer to the council for future consideration, it is not directly related to FY20 because we are for FY20 in very solid shape for being able to continue current services without asking for an override and without implicating any other significant decisions. Um, however, uh, as you look at the budget and understand the income revenue sources, uh, that the two and a half percent general limitation on property taxes uh, without new growth would pose a challenge and that we just need to understand that. There isn't really anything else we can say about it, but it is a fact. And uh, it's really for just future year consideration. There are other things that could happen too, as I pointed out, if there was significant inflation um, on costs, we couldn't maintain level services uh, and that is un an additional unrelated question. It's on the ex on But this. right now, there are areas in town where we're not actually maintaining services at the desired level, where um, there have been cutbacks and um, you know, it's just, it seems to me that you, we should be able to maintain stasis without having to grow. It's like that little animal that has to eat twice its weight, body weight every day in order to survive. Because um, then you can end up with just, you know, eating anything and just gr accepting growth of any kind in order to maintain yourself. And I don't think why we want to be in that position. Um, so if you want a sense of control, then we'd want to be thinking about um, reducing some of our expenses. And right now we're about to enter a huge capital, where with all these capital projects, I just feel like we have so many balls in the air that um, it's, it's, I'm feeling very unsettled about it now, where we keep saying we're gonna build a new DPW, we're gonna do a new fire station, we're gonna redo the library, we're, we're gonna build a new school, at the same time that we are not able to fund some things adequately. So um, it's just a question of statement of concern. I, I looked at this as something that I know I heard regularly during my campaign, and that is 
uh, needing to find a better balance between the tax burden on individual homeowners uh, in a way in a way that we have diversified our economy um, by having commercial space, whether they be retail, um, you know, light manufacturing, uh, additional uh, apartments, or whatever it may be. Um, so as we go into the upcoming capital uh, plan, we can also be looking at how do we better distribute the tax burden um, to others than our individual homeowners? The new growth uh, can come in many forms. A lot of new growth that has happened in Amherst over the course of the many years that I've lived here has been in construction of new housing. And uh, it's not all been of a one particular type of new growth, but uh, we still have had the same effect over a course of a long period of time since the uh, voters passed Proposition 2 in 1980, which is that property tax is the largest portion of uh, town revenue and it can only grow by 2.5% per year except for override or new growth. And because we've been very cautious about not asking for overrides, uh, and uh, property tax is 60% of the revenue. It's just an arithmetic problem that we're always going to have to deal with. Well, I, the, I'll tell you what is particularly worrying me is the new headline that there's more demolition going on in the town center and the sense that there's no there there, there's no organization. Um, I, I think that we need to, instead of letting things just happen as they will, when they will, um, because it is private property, that somehow the property owners, all of them should be called together and the town should have a discussion of what do we want that part of town uh, east of Kendrick Park to look like so that if we get new development, it be something that is thoughtful. Um, I, I just have a sense of, of not enough order right now. I'm not, uh, but I guess I'm back to the, the basic question that I have is uh, just making the observation for, on behalf of the council so that they're aware of the effect of limited growth in property taxes without some action is a financial statement and it's limited as to whether we provide the financial advice, what lessons you draw from it, what lessons the entire council draws from it is a really a separate question. Um, you know, we, we just have the draft report right now, but I think one of the things we can do to strengthen the what does this look like out five or ten years or what could it look like is the observation that state money has been shrinking as a share and has not kept up and that is affected by things that happen in Boston. It's not in our immediate control, but that's one of the reasons we're in the box we're in. Um, and this is not unique to Amherst. It's also Northampton is facing overrides to maintain their operating budget, you know, let alone to think of how they want to grow. And I, having spent years in New York City, uh, watching New York City grow to try to get out of its financial problems, municipal, they, they haven't got out of them. And the most recent story was a really scary one of authorizing rehabilitation of a public park, doing it, and then ripping out the public park because they needed to build a building <laughs> to support another. You know, so it's, it is a, um, it's a dilemma that I think we face that's not just an Amherst dilemma. So we probably can't, we can't solve it now and we can't solve it for FY20 for sure. But, but that's the pressure we're facing 
internally. I mean, when you look at the school budget, the amount they were supposed to get from various state sources versus they actually got the promises that weren't met would make a huge difference if it was fully funded for our town. And that's not just an Amherst statement, but it's other towns. So the interrelatedness is affecting us in a fairly major way. I think that the question for the Finance Committee is uh, the suggestion, of course, maybe I take it back one, the charter provides that we have several options as a council and it's what's the finance committee recommending that the council do. Uh, the options are to do nothing, let the charter just take its course. We can vote affirmatively to approve the budget as opposed to just letting it take effect. Uh, and the third, is we could actually vote to reduce a program. We cannot increase a program in, in this budget that we're now considering. Um, I have put forth a suggestion that we make an affirmative statement to the council that the council uh, endorse the budget that was proposed by the town manager. Uh, and not propose any reductions or deletions of programs. Um, and I think that's really the only thing that we have as a policy matter on the, that, that we can consider. And it's, is there, you know, I, that's my recommendation and I'll make, maybe turn that into a motion that we make that uh, recommendation to the uh, council. Would you please repeat the motion? The motion is that um, the Finance Committee recommends to the Council that it approve the Town Manager's operating budget as recommended. Second. I, I have one sentence of discussion. Um, I, I agree with that, um, and I will vote for that. Um, we've had much discussion on different aspects of the town's operating budget, and whenever we've questioned a specific sum um, and wanted to know exactly what it covered, we've, we've we're brought to the truth that a budget has to inclu include certain vague pieces of money for things that are going to happen, you know will happen, but you don't know exactly when or how much. So. I think that we felt pretty secure in the explanations that we were given as to these different numbers that were put down there. So um, I would vote to support the budget. Further discussion? Yes, do, do, I'm just trying to follow along just for clarification. You're essentially talking about this first order. Oh, yes. Right. And that, that was the question I was going to ask, Andy. Uh, I have no problem with the motion as it was proposed, but do we also need to come into this specific wording of orders, or do we, as we're sending it back to the council, say these orders go with that recommendation? Um, I think I was going to take that as a separate um, matter, but I think the... Because these orders directly track the budget. It's the line items right. in the budget, so, but, but they're worded in a way that goes back into the specifics of the budget rather than the general motion. So I'm just, do we, are we taking a motion on, we're approving the budget as recommended and then specifically appropriate, as Sonia's written them out, to appropriate this, to do this, I'm, do we need to do both? I don't think I understand your question. The first order that's up there, you would vote that bottom line, that the bottom line number of 68 million. And so we do need to take it specifically rather than the general motion of approving the budget. That's, that was exactly what I'm asking, that we need right. to get down to that next level. 
I'm not sure if the finance committee needs to take it to that level, but definitely oh, but, the, but, yeah. but the council. town council would have to, so we're. I think, I think that what it, the second motion that I would make, though I don't want to get mixed up by having two motions on the floor at the same time, because that's not good process. But a subsequent motion would be to recommend the order as proposed. And I think it has been reviewed by our town attorney. Okay. That was my, it wasn't a, that's fine. I just didn't know we needed to do both or by doing the first, it subsumed this. Yeah. Yes, it's been reviewed by the attorney. It doesn't, the only thing, the numbers are in here, the budget numbers are correct. All the, uh, um, um, Sources of funding are, are in here. What it doesn't have is all the whereas's and the therefores. I kept it simple so everybody could see what it's actually saying. So when you get the council orders, there, there'll be some more of that other language. But the numbers won't change. So the first action is whether we are recommending the budget as it has been recommended to us by the town manager. Is there any further discussion on that? None, none, none. All in the members of the committee uh, who are supporting raise hands. So it's four to zero, one member absent. I have a, I have a clarifying yes. question that relates to our June 3rd meeting. Margaret, do we need to vote the water and sewer rates before we vote this? Thank you. Because the, uh, we're now going to, if we move along to the, um, now we're going let, to, let's take care of the first order that implements what we just talked about, which was the, um, Part B operating budget appropriations. Um, that is the specific order that we would that the council would need to pass. Correct. And so the next, it, it's recommending that order, which just is the implementation of what we just voted. Correct. So I'll make that is the second motion to recommend order part B having uh, for the operating budget. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor raise hands. So it's four to zero uh, with one member absent. Then capital uh, budget is the next uh, matter and uh, so let me open it for discussion first as to whether there's anything that uh, members of the committee or the council want to discuss regarding the proposed capital budget, which was uh, recommended by the Joint Capital Planning Committee but has been adopted by the town manager as part of his budget recommendation. around seeing none. Uh, no. And I uh, think that the, and, and I want to make it very clear that uh, what I'm moving has to do with the proposed capital appropriations for FY20. It is not having to do with the 10-year plan. Correct. So with that, the motion would be uh, that the Finance Committee recommend to the Council the adoption of the Town Manager's recommendations to uh, fund capital appropriations for FY20 for equipment, buildings, and facilities as recommended by the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, this is the capital program as opposed to capital projects. 
which it took me a while to get straight, but this is, we've, we've gone over every one of these items in detail in past meetings. Correct, but this is only, as, as I've, it is only the portion of the Joint Capital Planning Committee report that makes recommendations for FY20. It is not the 10-year plan. So, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise hands. So it's, again, 4-0. And uh, one member absent. And then the last piece on that is that um, there's a specific order that has been recommended to us as the order that would be passed by the council in order to uh, complete the, uh, to fund the capital projects as we have just recommended. Is there, uh, I will make that as a, as a motion. I second. Is this the one? It says Part C. Yes, it's it's labeled as Part C Capital Program Appropriations. And, and as Sonia says, totally accurate, which we'd expect anyway. I matched it back to the once you subtract out all the other pieces, you get those three. So. Any further discussion questions? All in favor, raise hands. So again, it's 4-0, fund member absent. We have one additional order I think we should be voting today, and that is a, uh, you want to explain it? Excuse me. The rescission. Well, back under the capital part C, there was another order underneath there. And this is a housekeeping order that we haven't really talked about yet. It was supposed to happen during the fall town meeting, which we didn't have, but um, it is, basically just cleaning up our, our bond authorization. This is back from the Wildwood um, School Feasibility Study. We ought, the town meeting authorized a million dollars um, to borrow to have this study done, but MSBA also was um, reimbursing us. So the million, we ended up only having to borrow $317,000 of that one million. So we need to rescind 683 so we can be added back to our debt capacity. <laughs> so it's just a house cleaning. Yes. I recommend that we, I, I move that we recommend to town council that they rescind the $683,000 unissued amount that was authorized to be borrowed by the vote of the town of Air town at the annual town meeting held on May 7th, 2014 for the Wildwood School Feasibility Study. Second. I, I second it. Yeah. Okay. And just want to clarify, this is not money, this is just rescinding an authorization. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Any further discussion, questions? All in favor indicate by raising hands. So again, it's 401 member absent. Um, I have a, Andy, I have a yes. general question. Um, when we send our recommendation to the council, um, the actual budget, the total budget has a regional school numbers in it. If you go back and look at the managers, will we write this in a way to make it clear we've already voted on that in, as the regional, because that, that's, otherwise the numbers don't add up to the total, but the, it, they do add up to the total because we've done the separate part separately. I, good point, and what I'll do is, uh, there's that section that's not written yet that I said I would write after today's meeting having to do with the follow-up on today's process. Um, in a specifically going to incorporate and explain the orders, and uh, that will be a good place to make that explanation. And, and just so anyone reading the whole thing will be able to get back to the total total number rather than something less than it. <laughs> yes, for those who get into that level of detail, yes. Uh, so, um, I think the only thing, 
uh, remaining is whether we want to go ahead and do anything more on Community Preservation Act, the parts that are other than what we po deliberately postponed. Um, I, I would recommend that we try to do that. Today? Yes. There's just so many things that we keep kicking down the road, and um, we have had a lot of discussion on, on these items and meeting after meeting. Um. So, uh, are there any questions about other CPA proposals? And I, I mean by other, other than uh, Valley CDC. Yes, go ahead. Just a clarification question. Um, so Keith Haskins and the um, Sala property are acquisitions, so have to be voted separately. Yes. Um, I, Hickory Ridge is not an acquisition? Well, it is. It's an acquisition, but we don't have a uh, purchase sales agreement in place yet. This is just setting aside the partial funding from CPA. So this is to purchase the open space portion of it. But when they have the whole, the whole um, agreement together, they'll bring to you an, an order, just like the Key Haskins, with everything in there. And this is just going to show up as a funding source for that 200000 Yes. Sonia, do we have to borrow to buy Hickory Ridge? Uh, not, not, a, not, the, not that I know of at the moment. I'm not sure what the other funding sources are going to be yet since we don't have a, an agreement or a number yet. Great. Okay. Thank I'm you. not anticipating that we will be. Thank you. But it will require a separate vote because it, it is land acquisition. Uh, so which is why I've been doing two motions, and I'm gonna do two motions again, because um, in this circumstance, what we would be doing is I would be making a motion uh, to approve all CPA recommendations that are um, other than uh, Valley CDC, which has been postponed to a future meeting. And then I will ask for uh, recommendations on the orders that have been provided to us, which um, cover um, the two acquisitions, Zala and Keith Haskins, and um, all other expenditures other than the one we postponed. So that would be the two. So I'll start with the, yes. I, I just, um, just following up on Evan's question, because Hickory Ridge is under the cash outlay. So if, if we move forward, just as you've suggested, and we go forward on this, then when, we, when Hickory Ridge becomes real in that there's an acquisition, you'll have to come back and get another vote because then it will be land? Yes. Okay, this time around it's money. And there'll be more next funding time sources. Next time there will be something we're buying with the money. Buying with this money and additional money, I believe. Okay. Money, and of course, the reality is that money is not gonna be spent, uh, even if it's approved by the council, is, uh, yeah. because it can't be spent uh, without the two-thirds vote and an order specific to the purpose. Correct, this is just appropriating the money for a funding source. So the motion is that the Finance Committee recommend to the Council all Community Preservation Act recommendations from the committee with the exception of the Valley CDC proposal which we postpone our on which we postpone our recommendation. Yeah, I second that. I think we've exhaustively discussed it, but uh, is there any further? If hearing none, all raising favor, raise hands. So again, it's four zero with one member absent. And uh, the second 
I think I'm going to try lumping them if there, and if somebody moves to divide, so be it. But I'm going to try it as one motion. That um, they're, they're different issues. Yes. You're going to lump the the total 839. Is that what you're suggesting, or just the total in the grid, right? Um, or are you talking about adding the land acquisitions too? We're only talking about the total on the grid. Okay, because that, that was meant to be one number. <laughs> Let me go back and look a second at the... See, the Valley CDC is not in that number. Valley CDC is not in that number. Um, no, I'm more looking at the open space one. We do have to actually... That, that's why there's this oddity with Hickory Ridge is there, but the other two aren't because they are buying land. This is not buying land yet. Yeah, it's not buying. Yes. So it's so, part, so it's part so, of the grid. So the, the three orders together, let's get this, we, we just voted that we're, we're recommending all CPA proposals except one which we have not taken a position on at this time, which okay. is not an indication of where we're going with it by any means. Uh, and the second motion, there are three separate orders. And one order deals with everything except for the one we just put aside anyway, and two that involve land acquisition. Then there are two separate ones, each for land acquisition, one for the Zala property and one for the Keith Haskins property. And as noted, the net effect is that we will have recommended the money for the Hickory Ridge, but we will not have recommended the final action. Correct, that will come as a separate motion. That will, so the separate, At a later time. The separate order, assuming it's an order that the council yeah, puts sorry. forward. Um, Got my language mixed up. Would, uh, have to deal with uh, the land acquisition portion, not the appropriation portion. Correct. So the motion would be that the committee recommend to the town council th three orders under the Community Preservation Act appropriation One relating to all projects of uh, funding, except for uh, the three that have been accepted. Yes. It's um, this portion here for 839 is a majority vote. The other two are two thirds vote, and I think they should be done separately because they are land purchases. So I would caution on the. Okay, yeah. so you would recommend the committee, because it will be separate actions at the council. Oh, yeah, this is true. I'm stepping this is, ahead a, of this is only our recommendation to the council. Thank you. At the council, it does have to be separate votes. You are the council. Uh, we are the council, but, but uh, okay. we're only a committee of the council for the Sorry purposes of this vote. I, I had the council hat on. Margaret has it. Yes. It might work if you just clarify in your motion that it's understood that the council will have to treat these as separate as separate motions because of the uh, quantum vote requirement under each. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, Haven't, okay, uh, I don't think we have a motion on the floor at this point. Uh, let's just be done with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, is split it. I'm gonna move that we uh, approve the uh, proposed order for Community Preservation Act appropriations uh, with that cover 
all subjects except Valley CDC and the acquisitions of the Keith Haskins and Sala properties. Second. Second. Any, any further discussion? All in favor indicate by raising hands. Okay, so it's 401 member absent. Um, then the next motion would be to that the Finance Committee recommend to the Town Council um, two orders which will require separate votes attaining two thirds, one relating to the Zala property and the other relating to the Keith Haskins property. Need a second? Okay, so it's motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes. So I just want to make a, a brief point about this, but in the context of the future discussion about Valley CDC. Um, so these are two, uh, we're appropriating a decent amount of money, right? The Keith Haskins is $638,000. Um, I believe the questions that came up last time were about, you know, assessed value of the land and, and pretty limited to that, which seemed appropriate given this. I, I'm reading this and I'm thinking about the discussions we've been hearing around Valley CDC and what we're calling financial impacts, right? So no one is asking for a traffic study for these, even though perhaps more people will visit these properties and there'll be more traffic in these rural areas of North uh, East Amherst, right? No one is asking about the amount of money we have to spend <coughs> on trails and infrastructure. No one's asking about unbudgeted costs from perhaps more use of these properties. No one's asking these questions, right? And yet that extra scrutiny seems to be applied to the Valley CDC project. Uh, and so, you know, Dorothy made a statement earlier that these have been talked about at length. I, I don't know if that's true. My understanding was CPAC first presented their recommendations. This has been talked about at length at meetings. Now, it's true, I go to a lot of meetings, three a week, but we've asked all of those questions in great detail and they were answered. Yeah, we have actually covered these uh, discussions. Um, the two land acquisitions, um, there is um, no plan that is being put forward by the Conservation Department to add trails. Now. But in the future. And so my point, I'm not arguing yeah. against this, my point is yeah. I hope when the Valley CDC project comes, the finance, could, I, I worry that there is additional scrutiny being put on the project beyond just the bonding. I think the bonding merits additional scrutiny, but beyond that, some of these questions of traffic concerns and infrastructure, we don't seem to be applying to some of these other projects, and I hope don't necessarily become huge focal points in the discussion of, of the Valley project. But thank you. I can just leave. I'd like to just clarify um, with Margaret. What constitutes a two-thirds vote? Two -thirds is all members so it's not two-thirds of five. Okay. Thank you. No, this is a, this does not require two-thirds. This is a committee recommendation. This only requires a majority vote within the finance committee. We will require two-thirds vote of the council. Right. And uh, so we can make that recommendation, but uh, Madam President will have to determine whether we have attained two-thirds vote. Um, if she, um, Madam seeks. President, we'll rely on our town clerk. Uh, so, motion on the floor has to do with the two, um, the, the, the council recommend the two separate orders that will be required for the Zala property and the Keith Haskins property. All in favor indicate by raising hands. We're just doing the one vote for both. All in favor indicate by raising hands. So it's four to zero, one member absent. So I think that that takes care of. There's one more order. Yes. 2011. I, I just want to be very clear on the record that on personally, I have questioned the Salah property. Cool. 
So. Are they financial? I guess. Financial, I guess for financial reasons, but I don't question the other because it's our watershed. I have yes. I have a problem with that one because of the scrutiny that's going to Valley CDC. If you have concerns for this other issue, why aren't you bringing them up? It really confuses me. They've been brought up in other discussions. I mean, and my only question, frankly, was whether or not we truly needed to buy this land. It's kind but of an important question. that was discussed this last time when we all met. Can I just ask, clarifying, are you talking about the question uh, that Mandy Joe kind of put forward of, if yeah. this is probably not going to be developed, do we need to? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Because at this point, uh, we have voted as a finance committee to recommend. So, yeah. Uh, so the last order. So the last order, um, number 2011, this is to vote the, this ha has to happen every year. And it, um, it's to authorize the town, it's allowing the town to grant a higher real estate exemption to qualifying property owners than the base level set by the state. And this is, um, David Burgess sent me a letter this morning telling me that for fiscal year 19, our exemptions totaled $94,550. And the state reimbursed us uh, $31,700. And the cost of the town for this, for fiscal year 19, was about $35,000. And this gets paid out of the um, provision for abatements and exemptions, or otherwise called the overlay account. So 1% of the tax rate gets, a, gets set aside for any abatements that need to happen on the tax bills. So this is where this money comes from. And we vote this every year at town meet. We had voted this every year at town meeting. So what were the numbers you get from Mr. Burgess? There's no, there's no appropriation here. It's just right. authorizing the town to. No, but he gave for prior year. The, pri the prior year number was an, um, I'll send you the memo, I'll send you all the memo that David Burgess sent me first thing this morning on that, but with the exact numbers, but it was about 94,500 was the total. Um, thirty-one seven was reimbursed by the state, and thirty-five it cost the town thirty-five. I, the reason I paused is because thirty-one and thirty-five don't equal ninety-four. I know I don't have the memo in front of me either, but I promise you, when you get it, it'll make sense, and it doesn't have to be a part of this order. Does everybody understand what the order is about? No, <laughs> I do not. Do you want to uh, explain how the um, taxation, well, the, the exemption works? How about I call David to come on up? He's downstairs. He said he would come up and explain this to you. Okay. And basically, this is something that is, was, has been done every year by town meeting. And, I understand uh, that. I just don't understand what it is, and so I'm trying to. Obviously, I don't either. Just be responsible in terms of understanding it. I think you're starting with what is the exemption, correct? Right. That would be correct. Yeah. I mean, the the, the piece that David would uh, probably need to explain is if we didn't authorize it. What's the what's the how is the exemption determined? And then we're, because what we're essentially been doing is giving a greater exemption than um, the state minimum. I'm sure when David gets up here, he'll make it clear. So while we're waiting for David to come, um, let me just turn to the report quickly from uh, the, the committee to the council. I sent. Draft um, invited for invited comments. Um, if I receive any additional comments, I'll do my best to incorporate it. Um, I don't think that I have. I tried to not state policy 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, but I tried not to state policy um, other than what I thought was obvious committee discussion already. Um, but if there are any concerns about anything that people think that I stated that is policy, I want to get that into the report. Uh, the um, capital piece is consistent with what we have uh, written that I, and I wrote that and I've, and Kathy's reviewed it, I assume. Yep. And, uh, but not thoroughly yet. <laughs> and so the, um, and, the, and it tracks very clearly because it um, points out that the 10-year uh, projections are not part of what the uh, recommendation is. And the uh, last piece that I was going to talk about was policy, uh, the, the, the committee intends to come together as a committee uh, and I guess I should wait for Dorothy to come back to that. Uh, to talk I'd like about to make it. sure I understand our dates from here on, dates and times, because I know we flip those as well. So, but the, uh, unfortunately, I gather that Mr. Burgess is not available. With Dorothy's return, maybe we can just review our dates. Yeah. Um, so the last piece of the report, what I was about to say when you uh, left for a moment, Dorothy, was that the last part of the report is going to talk about recommendations for uh, the next fiscal year process. But basically what I was going to be saying in, a, in that section is that the committee is going to come together um, at a future meeting um, and make recommendations uh, for either um, June or July about fiscal, uh, about, about the planning process and the finance process for the next fiscal year. Um, that I'm not going to make recommendations. The other thing that I was going to point out is that the Finance Committee will need to make a recommendation about um, if we go forward as a council with a participatory budgeting process that we will have to consider um, an amount, an appropriate amount of money that might be available for that process. Um, but I was going to write it in a way to point out that we will have to have the discussion, not anything uh, to indicate where we would come on the discussion. And, and that money wouldn't be until FY21. That, that would be correct because uh, the participatory budgeting would be no earlier than 21. Okay. So. Can we review our dates going forward, including making sure we've set a date after June 18th? So this is the last finance committee that's been posted. Um, we're not meeting on the 30th, is that correct? On the 4th? The 4th we are. I had penciled in the 4th um, as 9.30 and penciled in the 11th, just as holding them. So, but then we were going to decide. Um, one issue was revisiting the tool. Now we've got a couple remaining issues. Yep. There's also the budget amendments for fiscal year 19. Right. That so I just didn't know whether we had con confirmed either the 4th or the 11th. When do, we, when do we have to do the budget amendments by, Sonia? Um, Paul's got it scheduled for June 4th Finance Committee meeting. That's why I'm confirming that we are having that at 9.30. Okay. 9.30 or 9? It says 9.30. 9.30 to 11.30. Okay. 
And so that will be budget amendments. Anything, and, uh, and then do we need one on the 11th, I guess, is the question. Or the 18th. If we're going to deal with the tool, then unless the only issue I have or concern I have is whether Sean has any time to really focus on that at that point. Okay. I'll check. So we are not so, meeting on the 6th. No. And on the 18th, uh, do we want to hold that as a um, tentative date pending um, whether Mr. Mangano says he's available? So we're meeting on the 11th? Yes. Or are we meeting on the 11th? It says if needed. We won't need it. Well, we, your meeting with JCPC is on the 6th, where it's talking about the potential way of thinking about the process for next year. Correct. Yes. And so one question would be is, sh if we can, should finance people come to that meeting? Should it be jointly posted? or? Do we follow up with a discussion either on the 11th or the 18th of that? Um, and I, I had a, a similar question with the CPA cycle, I think, was started late this year is what I was told. And mm -hmm. if they were starting earlier, so we knew what was coming down the pipeline earlier. Um, some of the questions on how would we get questions in if we even knew about the projects earlier. So. It's just a, that's a question, Andy. Just on a, if you're meeting on JCPC on the sixth, do we have a follow-up meeting? Do we meet with them? Do well, we meet on the 18th to talk about? I don't think we'll have a follow-up meeting with JCPC, but we no. will have a follow-up meeting because, and, and I think that we'll, that is part of the overall budget process for FY21, right. yeah, and it mean. will include the capital, and it will include. I think we need to include CPA. Everything needs to be in a consolidated budget process calendar. And it needs to be a process that's all encompassing. And uh, I was wondering if we just need a little bit of a break and do it on the 18th. Yeah, because that could be on the 18th then. Yeah. If you want my opinion a little yes. later, is it better for us here? Because we still have to close out a fiscal year and open a new fiscal year, and there's a lot of work going on, so we're not really spending a whole lot of time thinking of the next year's budget cycle right at the moment. So if it was even later, it would be fine. It would, it would probably be better. It would be another advantage to doing it in July, and that is if you we have new members who are um, our citizen members and we want to get them involved in, in part of our discussion for the process the it, year after. To do it on July 2nd? That's a Tuesday. Uh, it's possible they may not get appointed till July 1. Am I correct in that, Evan? I believe OCA's plan is, a, is for the council to vote to appoint them July 1, correct? Yeah. Okay. So we need to give them a little more time to assemble. I, I would regard <laughs> July 2nd as part of the um, July 4th weekend, which nobody knows where it is. It's, it's not a really a business day. So we're talking about whether we're meeting on June 18th. And what Sonia is suggesting is finance could use a little more time before we meet. Correct. Yes. Okay. And then um, 25th, are we meeting then? Uh, I don't think that there's a reason to meet. On the 25th? We need to meet on the CPA. Yeah, I guess we, yeah, maybe we should. Okay, good point. And that would be from? From 9.30 to 11.30? 
June 25th. Is it 9.30? It is. So June 25th. So we are meeting on June 4th to consider budget amendments. And uh, June, June 25th. And June 11th if Sean is, CPA. is available. So June 4th for budget amendments, June 11th on the model if Sean is available, and June 25th on CPA. Yes. Got and then I would, I would like to recommend, um, but see, we, this is a test, <laughs> July 16th to talk about the um, process for the uh, FY21. July 16th? I won't be here, but you can talk about it. Well, but you have very strong feelings on the subject. I do, but I will be on a river in Idaho, so I can't even call in for that meeting. I will really not be here. Uh, Are you back on the 23rd? Yes. Okay, so let's let's try for the twenty third. Are we doing morning or afternoon? My my July, June job is over, so you can be in the afternoon again. Okay, two o'clock. So we've penciled in three meetings, and with that we can get back to. We have this proposed order which you probably are familiar with, uh, Mr. Burgess. Thank you for coming. Uh, and uh, there were questions that were being asked to uh, explain it. Uh, and uh, so, please. Okay. What you're looking at is the There's the button the, on the The button's not on, David. Okay. That better? Yes. What we're voting on is the optional additional exemption, and this has been in place, I believe, since 1994. And what it does is every community in the state has exemptions for surviving spouses, military, blind, and elderly. They are the state's voter amounts that you can get. There's different changes that can be made to them to allow more for the people in the communities. Uh, such as the, um, uh, what do you call it when they change every year? Cost of living. Uh, we can adjust them for the cost of living by a couple of percent to the base state ones, and that's what we give. Then Amherst, I think it was in 1994, decided first off to make an exemption and increase that by, 12, I think it was 40% the first year. And then the second year, second or third year, we went to 100%. So that's, and that is the maximum you can do, is increase that amount by 100%. And that's what you're looking at in column two, that's what the cost is. It, well, it doesn't all increase at the same time. As your taxes go up, if, say you had $500 exemption this year, and your taxes went up by, six, uh, by $100 next year, we make it 600, not 1,000. It gradually gets up to the 1,000 from the base year. So that's what the additional is. That's why it's not going to be double all the time. Uh, basically, that's what it is. And the state reimburses us a certain amount of money on the number of exemptions we had based on the uh, state amounts. So that 31719 comes back against the 59439 So we get that on the cherry sheet. Uh, this has been in place, as I say, I believe it was 94 when Barry Del Castillo asked me to put it in place. And um, it's been, oh, it's been, it has to be voted every year. This is, is one thing that's going to come before you every year, the same way as town meeting had it. And it was actually in the, the consent calendar by the time for the last five or six years of town meeting. So that's why some of you probably didn't see too much about it. So. Yeah. It was covered in the Finance Committee reports each That's of right. those years, but never discussed at town meeting. So now are there additional questions? Now I understand it. 
Okay. So once you gave us the list of who the people who are exempt, now I get the exemptions. Thank you. We do have some other exemptions, but they do not fall under being doubled. Just just these the personal exemptions. In the uh, cost that comes out of the overlay account is apparently about thirty one thousand. No, the cost that comes out of the overlay account is the $94,549, and we get reimbursed by $31,000 from the state. Okay. So, and we are, we are, Amherst is on the line for the $35,000, which is the difference between the uh, base amount and the optional amount this year, and that varies from year to year. It has actually gone down a little bit. We have lost many exemptions. We had uh, over 120 at one stage, and. You can see at the minute we're down to 92 or 93. So there's not too many. But this has nothing to do with the program for s where people can provide services to the town in lieu of taxes. Correct. This is separate. This is the, that's a separate program, the uh, tax work off program, and that's been very, very successful for both us and the people. So. Is there a motion to recommend this I, order? I move that we recommend this order to the town council. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. All in favor indicate by raising hands. Any opposed? Um, then the pass is for zero with one member absent. Is there any other business that people want to raise at this point? I will uh, consider any written comments I receive from uh, members of the committee about the draft report to the uh, council. Um, I will draft those two sections that are not included so that you get a chance to see them. But um, my goal is that uh, I have something to Margaret for Thursday that she can send to the council. That I think we could do a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? And do you want? Did you adjourn the? Uh, uh, is there a motion to adjourn the full council meeting? Is there a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank.